Uh, a decathlon gear you'd recommend for everyone. 30 liter backpack to start with. Try to try to pack in that because if you have less space, you'll put more mine into what I don't really need. So I think first 25 years of my life, I was doing what was told to me. And honestly, I didn't have an idea. You get your branch in engineering based on how much percentage of marks you've got. It's not that the whole of outdoors is not for me. Probably yes. certain seasons are not for you. Probably some cannot do wetness. So yes. monsoon is not for me. Yes. And snow is not for me. But yeah, the first one, at least the first few, if you pick the right one for your body and your mind, then the experience might yes. be Yes. And I also feel that no one else can plan a trip for you more better than you yourself. Yeah. Independent hiker is an individual who loves to be in the outdoors but does not want to be rushed into get rushed into someone else's plan. You are basically captain of your own ship. Before getting to a situation where I know that I want to do this, I have done 10 other things yeah. which didn't work for me. Hello and welcome to the 6th episode of Mountain Days. I'm your host Mauna Naneya and today we'll be talking about how you can become an independent hiker and even make a career out of it. We have Mana with us today. He is a full-time speed hiker and an outdoor educator. He teaches people how to hike independently without compromising on your safety in the wilderness. Hi Mana, welcome to the podcast. It's nice to have you here. Yeah, thank you so much. I I'm pretty excited about it. So yeah, thank you. Hi. So um, we're in Bangalore right now. We have yeah. a gloomy weather and it's raining. But I think in comparison, you've you've landed from Manali today. So yeah. how's Manali right now? It is right pretty now? cold out there, and cold. it's not easy to be in a t-shirt and a short. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's it's. So pretty. you're actually making the best of uh, being in Bangalore, wearing t-shirts and shorts in yes. December. Yes, yes, definitely. This would have not happened in up north there. Right, yeah. of course. So you're an independent hiker. Mm -hmm. What what? is that about? Tell, tell us a little bit about how it started for you and what is independent hiking? Yeah, so I think I can define my work today as an independent hiker. Uh, independent hiker is an individual who loves to be in the outdoors but does not want to be rushed into, get rushed into someone else's plan. So mm -hmm. you're basically captain of your own ship. You enjoy the outdoors at your own pace at uh, whatever time is suitable for you and you can also stretch your experiences to the number of days that you have in hand but you really like to plan things out and uh, learn from the experiences that you have in wilderness you're not against basically something which is organized in a way it is just not your cup of tea you just want to be in the wilderness all by yourself have that experience learn something come back again retreat it learn learn and then head back into the wilderness now, this is my understanding of independent hiking, but uh, how it all started for me. So, I belong to Jaipur, Rajasthan. <laughs> I am not from the mountains, yeah. right? But uh, I think I was always active in sports since my childhood days. And uh, mountains will definitely fascinate you if they are not, if you don't live around them. Yeah. So, then in 2017, I got an opportunity to basically go up to Himachal. That's when I actually decided that, okay, uh, I went on travel trips basically and then I just had one simple question in my mind that, okay, I'm roaming around here and there, I'm driving on these uh, curves and uh, on these beautiful roads, I can see rivers, mountains and it's so peaceful, the air is uh, very nice. So why can't I do this full time? Uh, is it possible to just travel and keep doing stuff? And I think I have a very keen interest in the sports mm -hmm. and whenever we think about mountains we always talk about adventure sports mm -hmm. and the most accessible adventure sport I think is hiking. You just need a pair of shoe, a good season or a sunny day and you can just start walking and you're actually in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. So that's how it all started for me. I did my engineering, prepared for civil services but then I thought that okay I have this little kick for sports and maybe I can try something out there in the wilderness when I can stay much closer to the mountains but uh, initially the aim was to first check whether this boy from the plains can not just thrive, can, can he just even survive there in the mountains or not? Right. But then as I spent good number of good number of years there, I realized that you can't just survive, you can even thrive in that in that landscape if you really figure out your way through it. I, yeah. uh, from what I understand, you've never had a corporate job, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> very, very few of us are able to say that and yet you're doing, it's not that, uh, you know, you eventually figured out that this is my passion, uh -huh. but you started from there. So what yes. made you choose, uh, you said you've done your engineering, so what yes. made you choose this path even without trying the other path? 
But how how did you get that clarity that nope, this is what I want? And given that you're from the plains, I mean, somebody from the mountains would obviously be you know around the mountains and that's their environment. But yeah. how did you make that decision? So I think first twenty five years of my life, I was doing what was told to me, uh, and everyone that told me to do things were my well wishes. Of course. And and honestly, I didn't have an idea. You get your branch in engineering based on how much percentage of marks you've got. So I did engineering because that. was what assigned to me based on the numbers that i had in my 12th and 10th standard and then after that i prepared for civil services because uh, it was my father's dream to be honest that okay get into a socially prestigious job because this thing has so much value in the society and it would be nice and i was like okay i can give it a shot i went to delhi i stayed there i studied for that and when you study or prepare for civil services you basically become jack of all trades mm-hmm. you don't know everything about one subject but you know right. something about everything right and i think from there this understanding came into being that maybe i don't want to become an expert at something because in the world everything works together right and uh, why while i was given these while i was giving these exams there were some little small windows in between these examinations mm-hmm. and i was very close to the mountains i was in delhi <laughs> and uh, it was that time when i used to book a self drive car i used to convince my friends guys let's pool some money <laughs> let's go to a road trip because i also love driving that's when my first introduction to the mountains sort of happened in way back in 2015 16 and then again coming back to the same situation that this is really nice this is what i really want to do and wherever i went i just went on a small walk in the forest mm-hmm. i didn't know anything navigation what is the name of this trek what is trekking what is hiking mm-hmm. and i realized that i was able to do it with much ease and i was also enjoying it to a great extent so then i thought okay this is definitely deviating me from the studies that i have to do <laughs> but uh, you know you have this urge in you that hey this feels very very right to do but it feels extremely wrong to communicate this to your parents right. that you want to do this right, right? because there is no convention there yeah. there is no step 1 step 2 step 3 and you'll become something If you want to become a lawyer, you can do something and become a lawyer. But how to become a good hiker, right? There is no particular There's way no to go right. about it. There's and no rule book. Yes, uh, which I think it's also a good thing and a bad thing. So you can have your own ecosystem now mm-hmm. if that field is extremely new. So this is how I kept coming back to the mountains, and then one fine day I decided that yes, I have to take a stand for myself. I have to try this out before I regret. that i don't want to do this so i gave my three attempts for civil services i failed miserably and <laughs> uh then i thought that i should give give this thing so when you say that i've never been into the corporate world mm. but how did you get so much clarity that you want to do this mm. i think uh, before getting to a situation where i know that i want to do this i have done 10 other things right. which didn't work for me yeah but uh, when yes. we see things on social media we see the final stage of a right. person right yes. and uh, which is great no complaints but yeah i've done things previously i failed multiple times in a good way my learnings were amazing and if you look back you can connect the dots whatever i'm able to say the way i'm able to articulate my thoughts able to proceed in this field is coming from all those years of experiences of engineering and civil services i would say so yeah uh, maybe i was not in a corporate setup but i was still still learning somehow somewhere yeah so this term independent hiker yeah. is that commonly used or is that something that's coined uh, in recent times okay so for the western countries this is a pretty old term uh-huh. alpine hiking independent hiking diy do it yourself trekking right. or hiking speed hiking so these are things which are well known to people in the west mm-hmm. but in india it is definitely pretty new okay because trekking came to india thanks to the britishers uh if you google or uh, go to the wikipedia page of any mountain that has been climbed those mountains are climbed way back in 1960s 1950s by amazing british climbers right and that's how we indians get an exposure that okay this is how mountaineering looks like mm. right and that is all it all started for us but that was still in a very different uh, organized uh, way of hiking independent hiking came into being only uh, i would still say not very recently but it has been there mm-hmm. but it definitely is not as popular as the organized treks because obviously right. the the accessibility is not easy in order to be an independent hiker i think outdoor education is very very crucial 
and it is uh, it definitely takes that urge in you mm. that okay uh, i love planning you are a guy who would say like okay if i fail to plan mm. i'm actually planning to fail i don't want to fit into someone else's plan or if you fit into someone else's plan you'll just take learnings from there and you want to do things on your on your that's own that's a very nice statement uh, so <laughs> if who does it if you're if yeah, you fail so to plan you're planning to fail yeah failing to plan is basically planning to fail and obviously this is a nice quote that i read somewhere i'm sorry i cannot quote not quote it <laughs> yes it's <laughs> definitely not mine yeah. but you can pick learnings from here yeah, and there yeah so in 2023 if somebody wants to take up independent hiking yeah where can they start what 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 do you think is the first step into this world okay so i can tell you what worked for me or how did i uh, basically uh, did and i think things are working for me so first of all pick something as a hobby if you're talking about independent hiking go on hikes do hikes mm-hmm. you don't have to do your first hike independently go in an guided environment right where you're very safe and you just want to figure out whether this thing is for you or not so let's start with hobby right if it's your hobby go figure out if it's your hobby or not and then see that okay i i really liked it try it multiple times until it converts into an interest your hobby transforms into an interest and i'm like yeah this field has my interest now i am interested into independent trekking from that interest you have to do it enough mm-hmm. for 2 to 3 years so that you can understand that yes this is my passion mm-hmm. i am passionate about it right and last but not the least you should not just driven by passion you should also think long term mm. that is there a way to convert this passion also into profit in the long run yeah so i think this is the journey you start from a hobby pick a hobby see if it's your interest or not by spending time in there mm. go to people who are already doing it right so that you don't waste a lot of time yeah. or if you want to start on your own start on your own go to the closest mountain that you have here you don't have to go to the himalayas to start right. with right then get make sure that you are understanding that this is your passion or not and then is there a way other people around who are able to make profit out of it in the long run every person has its his or her own way mm-hmm. to deal with things mm-hmm. but then you can see that okay i picked up a hobby which i really love mm-hmm. and i don't have to seek a work life balance because it doesn't feel like work to me now because mm-hmm. my hobby has become my passion, passion which is fueling itself through the profit that i am making think of profit in as as a good economic term not as a bad bad term in terms right. of business so, so hobby pick your hobby if this is something you want is this something that i'm passionate about yes. and then is this something that i want to sustain to do for the longest time possible that i can think of yeah. so if you answer these three questions i yeah. think so then hobby, the next step yes so hobby interest passion profit so that's how i think and you can have your own creativity you can you know loop in whatever you like doing for example you like to document your experiences you want to share knowledge you know you want to get into the service sector side of it so for independent hiking i think there are two three ways to do it number one is that you get into the uh, service side of it for example if i start my own trekking company mm-hmm. then if it, if there are people who are coming with me on a hike i'll have a client to a service provider relationship with them right. you know and i am saying that okay i know the field of outdoors and uh, i make sure that you will have a very good learning experience there mm-hmm. without compromising again on your safety right. number 2 could be that i can freelance i can freelance as a guide as an organizer and i can i there's no need for me to get binded to one company and i can have learning experiences in different different landscapes i can freelance for a company up north i can freelance for a company down south That's in right. india i can go abroad there are so many possibilities and last but not the least where i feel is the sweetest spot right now is taking a step back and getting into outdoor education mm. basically with the help of social media documenting your experiences sharing all those tips and tricks that have worked for you and then building a career out of it in a way that you start teaching people by doing this right. what you're also trying to do is you know hiking you you are a trekker but you're also building uh, different skill sets like how to become a good teacher mm. because then in the next two years you're a hiker and a good teacher then maybe you are you have started documenting your experiences then you're a hiker you're a good teacher and you're also a very good orator right you know so that you can have your own youtube channel you can have a blog you can have your instagram handle that is actually helping people right. so i think the key takeaway for me who is seeking a career in independent hiking is to level up your game in one field in one aspect for example hiking trekking mm. and then also keep uh, working on other skills, other skills that will give you the best combination 
and then you can again have your own ecosystem because yeah. here there is no conventional path to do things you can come up with your course you can teach online you can build Workshops. a community yes so many yeah right. so, so you can do these I, many things i think things. this is based this answer that you just gave is like a summation of the entire <laughs> episode we were going to have <laughs> <laughs> which is basically uh, this it's wide open yes. there is no you know there is no hierarchy in which it goes it's more uh, Uh, you know horizontal, horizontal. Sp- spread yes. and it's up for grabs so it's and okay. again up to you so if i am somebody who is willing to write more than probably be a person who's in front of the camera then that's where i can focus my skill yes. but eventually also probably bring in a little bit of aspects that the consumers need right so that upskilling is constantly required as well that's what you're saying yes i i agree on on the same point yes right. but i think still there is this basic element that you need to have a risk appetite right to <laughs> take that risk and that leap of faith mm. that okay let's try this mm. let's try this let's let's pick this hobby and let's see if i can take it up to the level of passion and profit in in a very very long run yeah. so then you're entering into a field with a plan and i think if you stick to it for a couple of years i i think it is going to work for sure so yeah. what about um, the physical fitness because if you if we are part of an organized trip and if you have a lot of people with you yeah. then there's a little bit of um, you know mental stability also because you think you know you're emotionally and uh, physically there is another person to lean on but in independent hiking or independently when you're doing any part of the the entire passion and hobby you're talking about it's just you So is there do you do you believe there is a difference in um the physical aspects and the mental aspects and does it does this need more attention does individually doing it need more attention I think uh, anything that we do any pain point that we have any fear that we have that hey I don't know whether I can do this solo or not right even on riding a bike forget hiking for that aspect what we can always do is have a gradual introduction to our fear see fear saves our life so having fear is not a bad thing it's a great thing and uh, but a gradual introduction to the fear is very important so okay i love independent hiking or i think i like to try independent hiking and i want to do it but you can also go in a guided environment for a couple of times mm. so that you know okay what type of clothing do i need to wear oh how much minus 10 degrees actually feel you know how easy or difficult is walking on snow or not right that is a very very gradual introduction and you're open you are the experience is just unfolding in front of you so you are not held bound into okay i have to have a take away from this mm. you're very open because right. it is still your hobby right and then there is again a very gradual step that you can take so we all know that there are these uh, big calendars and timetables we know what are the popular seasons when people go hiking mm. so go on the most popular the most commercial mm. hike mm. look at the calendars of mm. the organized trek companies choose the same date and go solo you will technically never be That's solo that's brilliant right yeah, because yeah. you'll have people all around you don't know how to navigate right. your phone is off right. it's raining right. just sit there in 5 minutes there will be two people who will cross you right. so gradual introduction so always always take risk mm-hmm. calculated risks so that you can experience the outdoors whenever you feel go oh this is going beyond my control you can come back to your shell come back to your comfort mm-hmm. reach out for help and you will be able to do it and from there there is no end you can just keep building up and up and up right. and up so like as you mentioned about the organized you know just look at the organized tre- uh, trek companies or trip companies calendars they also do mention uh, the level and moderateness of the difficulty and what sort of person can actually do these these sort of hikes so does that apply to independent hiking as well because here you are self evaluating there is no one else so what do you what is your suggestion there for individually evaluating if this is moderate or difficult or easy correct. how would you know correct again this my answer would again be gradual introduction so what is easy for you could be difficult for right. me right so why don't i start with day hikes micro experience is basically mm. okay i'll go hike for 3 hours mm. i'll go on a hike which is flat mm. i'll go hike with my mom i'll take my kid with me you know i'll go hike with my wife or my girlfriend and i'm not looking for anything out of this world mm. i just want to walk for 3 hours that's all i want to do can i walk for 3 hours can i walk for 3 hours right mm. so you don't have to invest on any hiking gear mm. because right now you're not in the right position to mm. take a informed decision mm. equipment will aid you very well if we know how to put it to good use and to reach that level right now maybe i don't deserve that or i even if i buy it maybe i'll not be able to use it to its full potential mm. right so very gradual introduction but again here the problem is that 
uh, when we are busy with our lives, we have very little windows. We have very little time, you know, and we yeah. can and we can actually manage that. Okay, right. these are the holidays I have, you know, and this is my time when I want to be stress free. I don't want to stressed out about planning and going on these hikes. And therefore, again, as I say, a gradual introduction would always always help mm -hmm. so then you can go pick a valley and start doing things around that and the next question or the next doubt could be that oh, how do I find these hikes then I don't know where are these but these are all available online and I constantly keep working on uh, bringing this knowledge of these small little hikes that are there that you can go so start with day hikes and check how much time is it taking you to do that you can use apps mm. to know what is your speed, how much time does it take on the incline, how much time does it take you walking on snow, mm. not on snow. And then I think with the first three to four experiences, you will be in a position to tell that, okay, I'm reading a blog about a hike and I think, yes, I can, I can do it. Yes. This is my level now. And again, you can just keep building up on it. Yeah. So um, there are plans to, you know, there are trails. It's not obviously a highway road that you just walk on, right, when you're yeah. hiking. So there are uh, route plans. There are, uh, uh, you know, things that people mention that we'll go from point A, which is we'll start here, 15 kilometers, we hike to this point. Yeah. So that's about the itinerary that you get for the famous ones and that's out there. But let's say I'm out venturing onto an unexplored place. So what, what do you suggest are a list of things? Like how do I plan? How do I get the route? How do I navigate? what are those couple of things that I need to do okay so I think first very important thing that we need to understand that why do trails exist in India right it is very different from the west mm. okay in the west if I look at a mountain and I want to climb it I'll go climb it right and then the community will build a route around it you'll have markings physically on the ground mm. they'll put it on an app so mm. that you can research about it how mm. is the elevation profile looks like mm. when you're back home online in India it is totally different in India a trail exists because it has a bigger function or a role to play. Mm. A trail exists in a meadows because shepherds go there to graze their sheep, right? A trail exists in the forest closer to the village because people go chop wood and come back. So it is these people who are walking on these trails and hen hence these trails are maintained. Mm. Hiking is one of the last things that you do on a trail. Mm. So if we can just figure out what are these trails existing for? We can go on these hikes when these people are actually using these trails. So yeah. picking the right season mm -hmm. is extremely important. Okay, I love snow, but maybe my introduction to high altitude can be in the summer. Because when the snow will fall, right. it will cover up the trail, you know. Absolutely. So again, gradual introduction. Right. So go step by step by step. Then you will not feel that you're doing something crazy. Mm -hmm. You will be very, you will be taking very calculative risks mm -hmm. and your experiences will be much better. And I think navigation is something that we should definitely definitely learn one of the biggest elements that is missing out there when it comes to outdoors is the fear of losing my way hmm. and when we live in the cities we don't really work on building our direction sense a sense of direction this right. is north this is south this is east this is west oh, yeah no yeah. idea <laughs> because there's no need because there's right. no there's no need right. and this need comes up only when we hike in the mountains but this is something that can be addressed very easily through mm. three sessions maybe through outdoor education, this can be addressed. And then you can just use an app that works completely offline. You don't need any internet or network for that. And you can hike very comfortably without compromising on your safety. You'll understand, okay, this is how distance works. For example, when you go to the mountains, right, ask a local individual, uh, uncle, how much time will I take to reach to that lake? Right. They'll always answer in time. Mm. They'll never answer in distance. Right. It's three kilometers. Huh. They'll be like, they'll first look at you. Okay, you're Look from the city. You analyze you and then say, <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're from the city. And, they'll be, and they're very concerned. They'll not judge you, but they are very, very nice and they just want you to be safe, mm -hmm. right? And then looking at you, they'll say that, okay, maybe you're from the city. So usually it takes us one hour, but it'll take you three hours mm -hmm. to reach there. Mm -hmm. Because in mountains, it's not just the distance, it's mm -hmm. also the elevation, yeah. which our body is very new to, mm -hmm. right? And therefore, I feel navigation and other things like how you said physical fitness and all are definitely crucial fitness cannot go out of the equation mm. to to experience the outdoors but at the same time you don't have to wait for a day to become fit to do a hike right. there are enough hikes they are present for every individual mm. right fitness cannot be one straight line that we draw that okay if you're above this you can do it if you're below this you can't do it that is not the case so if we learn how to pick the right trail that mm. suits my need my need is simple, go out, hike for three hours, sit there, eat something, come back. Right. Because that's helping me in my daily life. Mm. So I feel what I work towards is, outdoors has to be as comfortable as indoors. 
because then only I can go in the outdoors over and yeah. over and over again. I don't have to sweat a lot. I don't have to push myself. Right. I don't have to struggle with so many elements. And I don't have to look at mother nature mm. as something that is super unsafe. You yeah. should not be afraid of it. We'll be afraid of it again only when we just jumped our fear meter, you know, all mm. of a sudden. Mm. And then I think things will become very easy. To so when you said... Um, the outdoor education is important to you know then understand these aspects so is it is am i right in saying outdoor education is the enabler for this profession i guess and do they go hand in hand yes i think in order to become a good independent trekker or hiker a diy hiker a speed hiker someone who does everything all by himself or herself they need to educate themselves education. about navigation, about seasons, about the type of terrain, about the local culture, how are things in that particular village, about nutrition, about hydration, about uh, how your body responds to cold because every human is different. So you get to know your body better, you get to know the wilderness better and then this is a constant learning that keeps on, keeps on happening. So yes, outdoor education I feel is crucial. Yeah, it so, definitely in, helps. In this entire uh, journey of yours so far, have you um, ever noticed something that's taken casually um, in the outdoors but should absolutely be of importance? Yes, yeah. yeah. Of course, it <laughs> <laughs> would have happened. Yes, 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 definitely. I think first of all is that, uh, okay, my friend is planning a trip for me, right? And I'll just on the final day appear there. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to do it. Yes, God he'll do, is going everything. To do everything. He'll plan, right. he'll book the tickets, right. you know, he'll book a slot for me, and he or she is will he do is you? everything. Yeah? Is he is you? Uh, no, I still think if somebody is not sitting on a couch inside their house and going, going outdoors, mm -hmm. it's still great. Mm -hmm. They'll have something good or bad coming out of it. So even if things don't go as per their plan, they'll have an amazing story to tell, mm -hmm. which will <laughs> definitely help them in their next uh, hike or experience. So, one is that. Number two is I feel that. Uh, we try to fit in the natural cycles into our vacations. So I know that when is it that I'm going to get my holidays, maybe Christmas and New Year, right? Mm -hmm. And I try to fit in what trek, oh, I want to go on this trek and I want to go now because mm -hmm. this is when I have time. Mm -hmm. But we need to understand the natural cycle, right? That is that time is, even that trail is accessible or not? Will it be enjoyable or not? Because mm -hmm. it is at an altitude that there will be so much snow and so much of cold. Mm -hmm. I need to invest more on gear and I need to prepare a lot for that. Right. So if we first understand these nuances of how seasons work, have an understanding, mm -hmm. and then whatever holidays I have, then I try to adjust holidays based on the cycles of nature. Mm -hmm. Water cycle, cloud cycle, snow cycle, yeah. tree line, snow line, right? Then I think the success rate of the experiences that we are going to have in the outdoors will definitely increase exponentially. So trying to fit a trail in your vacation or holidays is again a very casual common mistake that most of the people do. And what I feel sad about it is that once you go do it, you don't like the experience and then you your biggest takeaway could be that outdoors is not for me. Mm which I think is really, really sad. If you could have just chosen the right trip, right. the right season, mm. you would have enjoyed the best time in the in the outdoors. It's not that the whole of outdoors is not for me. Probably yes. certain seasons are not for you. Probably some cannot do wetness. So yes. monsoon is not for me. Yes. And snow is not for me. But yeah, picking that right, the first one, at least the first few, if you pick the right one for your body and your mind, then the experience might yes. be Yes, and I also feel that no one else can plan a trip for you more better than you yourself yeah. and the only way to do that is to educate yourself learn about these nuances and i think we live in an age where information is free i know it's tricky to find the right information yeah. but if you can get hold of that information and start applying them into tiny bits you will definitely have your plan all sorted and you'll enjoy the outdoors so we spoke about passion and hobby and you know like how it makes you feel and choosing if you want to really do this so once chosen uh, the next step is obviously sustainability yeah. and when I say sustainability, I'm talking financial ability and financial independence. So yeah. is, is that really something that's possible in independent hiking? What I, about the money aspect of it? Yeah, I guess yes. The, the answer, the short answer is yes, mm -hmm. but I think that it is definitely going to take some time for you to do that, right? Mm -hmm. First of all, my suggestion would be that you'll have to live closer to the mountains to understand mountains, right? 
usually the frequently asked question is that hey how do you make money out mm. of it right? right but i think when i'm trying to figure out the situation that okay this is my hobby or interest or passion i should just go grab whatever comes my way right so i'll just grab it i'll try to learn from it and the first 2 to 3 years expect nothing to be honest because the reason is simple i can work as a trek guide or a trek organizer from day one itself the mm. moment you do your basic mountaineering course mm. advanced mountaineering course you are eligible to take people on slopes right imagine you're living in a place like manali because i live there for most part of the year you're living there and uh, you're taking people on hikes mm. you're spending 10 days in a month to do that you're earning enough so that you can sort out your food and accommodation in a place like manali which will be close to 10000 rupees 10 to 12000 if you can cook your own food you can mm -hmm. get that sort of an accommodation you can happily live a healthy life for 12000 rupees you so mean your monthly budget that you need to live in a, yes. in a hilly area like for in example in a hilly area where you have your own little room you're mm -hmm. not living in a lavish hostel right. or an accommodation mm -hmm. you are either volunteering volunteering i don't think is a great option because volunteering basically is a full day thing right so you don't get enough time for yourself mm -hmm. so i think first step is so there are there are two strategies at the very beginning number one is i can volunteer somewhere but the problem with that is i don't get enough time yeah for what i came there to came do came here to do right, right? Mm -hmm. i have an impression mm -hmm. that i'm in the mountains i'm in the outdoors but technically you're not in the outdoors you're still just still one working. step away yeah. from the outdoors so that's why in the long run i don't really like volunteering volunteering is good to understand whether uh, you know i can handle this terrain or the extremities of it or not you want to spend your first winter in manali go volunteer not a problem but now if you're serious about something like independent trekking you have to make your feet dirty you mm. have to go you have to hike mm. it cannot be that you can just sit on your desk and just look the mountains from the window and you know i'll make it happen i'll make it happen it's not going to happen So if I spend 10 days in a month taking people on slopes what did you come there for you wanted to hike more so that you can learn more mm. right yeah. but if I'm spending 10 days technically in a month I have just 20 days left with me 5 mm. days my mind space will be hey my slots are not filled there are not enough people I need to grow my instagram so that more people come to know me and then go on hikes with me this guy is asking for discount I have to give him discounts etc etc so if you live in manali for 2 years or any hill station for that sake technically 50% of the time one year you were technically not in the outdoors hmm. and then the pressure will build up that oh it has been 2 years you know and you know i think this is not for me but is it technically 2 years no it's not so first thing for the first 2 to 3 years don't think about earning borrow money from your friends this is how it literally help me so i say that once you have a big youtube channel you have instagram that's not when you actually need patreon right you need patreon at the initial stage of your life hmm. if your if your parents don't understand what you do ask your friends just reach out for help don't be shy reach out for help get that 5k 6k on day 1 give it to the place where you're living and now you have 30 days to hike mm. all by yourself mm. so for the first 2 3 years i have lived spending 5000 rupees every month which i used to borrow from my friends and they knew that maybe this guy will be never be able to pay it back if obviously i think i am blessed to have uh, the support system which existed one way or the other always maybe i'm sitting here as one person i still can imagine 100 people right behind me pushing okay okay keep doing it keep doing it so if you have that you can actually utilize the first 2 to 3 years what is this phase this is the phase when you are trying to figure out this interest this is your passion or not right yeah the transitioning phase the transitioning phase so first 2 to 3 years don't expect mm. drastically find ways to reduce your expenditure don't expect a private room mm. don't expect an elmira where you can save your laptop no no such things and then be on the slope document your learnings share your failures be the person who normalizes failures mm. that's the problem with i think social media at present in this field right that we don't normalize failure hey i tried and i failed because people have so little time to experience the outdoors mm. and they want the success rate to be Quickly, high yeah. but then the learning rate is also very low so that is the thing because if you do it very easily you'll be like ah oh it was easy there's no learning but if you will do it on your own those learnings will be there so first 2 to 3 years you'll not have that but these 2 to 3 years you're building up mm. your own ecosystem so to give you my example i wanted to go hike to brigulik it's a very known trail i used to stay in this hostel called trinido run by a friend 
he had supported me to a great extent he's like i've just opened the home stay right come and stay here don't pay money we'll see we'll figure out how things work i'm like okay cool i'm staying there in the town of vashisht i want to go to brigu lake and i know that uh, you need to have a backpack you need to have a tent you need these basic hiking gear to go hike brigu because it's not a one day thing i was like okay no i don't have the resources what i'll do is i'll start very early morning maybe 5ish and i'll go and i'll see at what point i can reach till 2 pm and wherever i am i'll turn back that's my turn around time hmm. because i don't want to compromise my safety right to my utter surprise i was at the lake at 1 pm hmm. that was the day when so many stereotypes just shattered in front of me i'm like wow i can actually explore and access so much of outdoor which is there in that valley hmm. every day and that day and today nobody sees me in the hostel during the day very early morning i leave yeah. i'll i'll just hike as much as i can and then i'll come back down i'll just figure out there are two villages on this mountain mm. people from village a will go to village b mm. right i'm not trying to do a bucket list tick right. that hey i'll start documenting the most famous trails in india i'll start do going kedar kantha there abu gyal this no 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 that's because again going to kedar kantha requires money mm. going to there abu gyal requires money those 20 popular treks that we have in our country are spread across the right. landscape do you have the money to do that no wherever you are find trails mm. there will be trails in every town in every hill station there are trails multiple number of trails so go on one way where there's a split you don't know mapping it's fine come back take the split the next day and do it mm. so this is what you can do for 2 to 3 years mm. build up build up build up and then after that come up with something that you can maybe teach people if teaching is your thing mm. document things if documentation if your thing is your thing i think female hikers can have a a great opportunity there's such a huge space which is out there mm. when i go to a village imagine i'm hiking in the border of jammu and himachal and we finally reached a place where there are locals who are ready to host us and they're cooking food for us very healthy very healthy food as a guy i cannot go into the kitchen i cannot take my gopro there <laughs> and cover the story of that lady or that yeah. shot which I is can. happening in the kitchen you can right right but i understand mm. that uh, i can go anywhere mm. right because we belong to a society where technically i will feel much safer but i still feel that there is this big space which i can never you know do justice to which a female hiker can do so as a vlogger as someone who writes a blog and document these experiences there are so many things that can be done there's so much of scope coming back to the money part first 2 to 3 years i expected nothing then after those 3 to 2 to 3 years i thought that okay i'll come up with a course i'll start teaching people in a structured format mm-hmm. i learned everything like this mm-hmm. why don't you make it systematized consumable yes mm-hmm. and then start selling it mm-hmm. but then first you have to do it so call your friends be them the puppets <laughs> always <laughs> you know, you, friends you, family <laughs> yes you just test them test those things out on them without right. telling them mm-hmm. that hey this is what i'm trying to do mm-hmm. so you're trying to simplify Get things you're f- you're finding a space in there that okay maybe this is something that i really like doing mm-hmm. hey did you get this i told you this it works for you yes mm-hmm. so then you come up with your own mm-hmm. course mm-hmm. by doing this there's no competition also there's no competition because no one else is doing it mm. right so you have time to build it to polish it to an extent that you can have your own usp mm. that hey you know i am someone who is doing this and i think always also analyze the market space right for example if you look at the statistics of my youtube channel most of the people who actually watch my videos are in the age group 44% of them are of the age group 25 mm. to 35 mm. that's all mm. the rest 20 30% belongs to the age of 18 to 24 mm-hmm. right so basically when i'll be independent right and uh, i got my first job for example that's when i have the you know power to spend i can take my decisions on my own i'm mm-hmm. living in a city which is you know very new to me and now i can spend my weekend hiking so that's when people usually get introduced to hiking yeah and then they'll do maybe 5 6 7 8 treks in a span of 5 to 6 years once they have more responsibility when they take decisions of getting married and extending their family they also get out of outdoors mm. gradually mm. right mm. so basically if i look at this every year there is a new population of beginners coming to every city so why do you want to teach the experts why do you want to say hey i'll show you how to climb the toughest peak rather tell them mm. how to do the most easiest hike because where is the market beginners, beginners are the market. the market because it's a fresh input of beginners every single year mm. 
So just make a video on how to get inside your sleeping bag. That's what will work better than you telling them that, okay, hey, let's go climb that peak. Mm -hmm. Because understand, here's there where people live, mm -hmm. here's where the river flows, mm -hmm. then the forest, mm -hmm. then the meadows, mm -hmm. then the scree or the moraines, and then the glacier, right? right? So a country also has basic mountaineering course. It's mountaineering, and it was envisioned by respected Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, yeah. 1960s, yeah. amazing institute, and it's very great. I've done both the courses, BMC, AMC in 2017, and you know, they taught us everything mm -hmm. which was there up there on the glacier, what mm -hmm. to do, how to climb an ice wall, and it was an amazing experience, to be honest. Mm -hmm. And I have such amazing friends from that course, because if you tell them a plan, they'll not cancel it, because <laughs> we, all, we all sort of like doing those things. Right. So once I did that course, I was still focusing that, okay, glacier has a very small window, it is not accessible throughout the year, right. but the forest is accessible throughout the year. Right. So there you can find your niche that mm. in India, if we can come up with a basic trekking course, mm. we can make the most out of our basic mountaineering course. Mm. Because why don't we learn about trekking first? Because forest is more accessible, mm. meadows are more accessible, smaller windows, not too much of fitness required, not too much of costly gear required, and then maybe I can build up my path there. So s I looked at this point and I like, okay, this is where I want to work this is my market and this is where I'll you know work around and build something which is not in competition it will just make BMC a little more useful than right. its present value right now so after two to three years you'll have to pick these points where is the element where is it where I can enter into the market mm -hmm. and create something valuable which can you know earn you an, an like great amount of money when you start your course you do your outdoor course four days seven days come up with an online community you can easily make close to four to five lakhs per annum, which mm. is basically your profit. Yeah. The moment you do that after the first three years, I am an individual who usually does not change his lifestyle drastically. I'm wearing the same shorts, which I'll wear on hikes. Mm. So that gap in between the lifestyle in the outdoors and the indoors, that gap is lowering down mm. for me, mm. right? So that way you are basically automatically becoming a minimalist. Your mm. expenditure is still low. Mm right but your earnings are increasing every year right so realistically speaking for someone who does not have the you know bulk amount saved up or starting from scratch it takes about two to three years to start having savings is what i understand from the you know from your answer and um, secondly the point is what is your intent so like you said, you become a minimalist, you start to re reduce the gap of, you know, the more you earn, the more you spend is what happens with the majority of us. But it, it sort of reduces that saying, I'm still going to be wearing the same track pants and the same hiking shorts. I'm not immediately using the lakh rupees I've made this year into splurging on a suit or a mm -hmm. lehenga or a ghagra, mm -hmm. right? I'm still mm -hmm. going to be using the same clothes that I do have. Yeah. And probably in, look at everything as investments. And if this is something that I'm going to be using in multiple different aspects and things like that. So if my, if, correct me if my understanding is right. So the intent of this individual taking up this profession has to be pretty clear that you're not in it to you know buy the vehicle and the and the house and you know the, the normal things is that right I mean if I'm a corporate employee or I have a job where somebody's paying me money versus when I'm making my money I need to be sure on my intent of this money where this is going and why am I in this profession right okay that's yeah. what I un understand yeah. from yeah, <laughs> yeah. so I think like, see, I had an option. I was lucky enough. I think I would always say I am from a privileged section of the society, mm -hmm. right? So I was capable of taking that risk. Mm -hmm. If I would have had a hands to mouth situation in my house, I would have never thought of outdoors. Probably Forget it, not. right? Forget it. Right. So if that is a situation for someone that, okay, I have responsibilities. I cannot just, okay, I leave my corporate and I'll go take that risk. No, I don't think that's a great idea. So I'm an individual for whom plan B is to make plan A work no matter what, mm. right? I was all heads on into it. Mm. But I am not sure whether this is going to work for everybody. Correct. So again, try to make a plan which is much realistic. You can be in your corporate job, see if you have a work from home option, right? Mm. In that phase where, where you're trying to understand whether this hobby is your interest or not. Mm. Right now you're spending time to go to the landscape and access it. Mm. You can reduce that time and expenditure. Yeah. That flight ticket that is costing you every That's time. That's the most 
uh, cost actually go yes. in reaching your destination so is the most cost if that is an option for you because we live in an age right now mm-hmm. especially thanks to covid that we have the option to work from home go work from hills mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. on those two days that you get saturday sunday you have the full day because you're not traveling in a bus you're not into a flight or a train right. you step out of the house and there's the trail do something in those two days mm. and see whether this is working for me or not mm. you don't have to go all in like me mm. but have a plan whatever you did on those two days right document something one more pressure that everyone feels is that i have to be good enough first mm. to tell people mm. how it is done but the moment you step out mm. you are two days into the outdoors you have your learnings which people are people are seeking right now mm. which airbnb did you stay in mm. which was the closest to the trail mm. this information is much more valuable and you don't have to hike for 6 years to right. get this info you can get this info in 6 days right. right so you have a plan you're serious about it you're not leaving your job you have your job if you have the work from home option you're doing that mm. take, take a sabbatical take a leave if you have a partner and you have an understanding that okay hey i learn for the next 6 months mm. i want to break mm. you know i'll go figure out things mm. and you know you are you are my backup basically right yeah it works cool go experiment something in those 3 months and if you're not from the mountains and if you're somewhere in the plains i i mean you don't have to go to uh, the himalayas all the time to experiment you can probably go to the nearest range yes. that's available again okay, gradual introduction gradual. you know okay this is my budget and this is how i'll make it happen you don't have to be a trekker or a hiker on from day 1 you can also travel and do things whatever you're doing if you document it if you start sharing things with people i think when you even are in a situation that you have to go back to the corporate i think those experiences also can add to your cv that okay i was not wasting my time out there mm-hmm. i had learnings which can actually work in team building activities maybe that are very useful and crucial for the corporate sector i'm not the right person to talk a lot about that you know but i think you can find your way through that so mm-hmm. uh, you can also do this that uh, you say that okay i have a particular amount of savings i don't want to touch these savings i'm taking a portion of it and i'll go and experiment whether this works for me or not mm. and then i'll see what kind of return i'm getting out of this mm. but the only way to do is is to document what you have done right because we live in an age where if i don't see it maybe you have not done it and if i don't know you how will i take something that you're selling because i don't know you exist mm. and i think people follow people's work on mm-hmm. social media mm-hmm. that hey you're doing amazing work and yeah. i feel that uh, for me my profile initially was about things that i am doing mm-hmm. and that wasn't growing that well mm-hmm. i started putting out posts that were for the people mm-hmm. for the viewers mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. to the point correct information that they need it's mm-hmm. not about what i think they need mm-hmm. it's what they need mm-hmm. and then it picked up quickly it's what i did Uh, yeah. the the media has moved from what i did or what i am doing to how you can do this yes so and i it could like you said simplest of things how to get into a sleeping bag yes that was one of my biggest problems <laughs> i went to sandakfu and i'm just wondering what yeah. do Which i side do is out? No, actually sandakfu was the home stays because you really can't camp there right because of the wind but the second one was kedarkanta <laughs> then i'm wondering i don't know how to get in i'm trying and i'm struggling first thing i did is i opened up the full zip and light down and i'm like how am i supposed to put it back and zip myself up okay. so that's like a very good uh, suggestion and a tip that there are so many basic things that you can actually start which is what people are looking for bare bare minimum things but climbing a glacier five people will want yes yes but it's it's great and yeah. it's amazing it's yeah. out of this world feeling because 100% you are into the activity you don't think of anything else yeah. when you're climbing an ice wall but we're talking about building a career right it the glacier can wait it's there it's not melting at that fast of a rate it can <laughs> wait i can go there later not a problem but if i have a job mm. you can switch in a very gradual fashion mm. see see if you have this possibility mm. of doing this thing work from the hills get in gradual introduction to the to the outdoors and then try to balance things out and there are so many people friends of mine who have moved again they come from a section they work in a particular field which have this option mm. of working from hills mm. and they have rather reduced their expenditure how much they are paying to stay in a homestay that they or or a a uh, house that they have taken on rent they are spending much less than what they'll spend in cities like bangalore pune yes. chennai or mm. mumbai mm. right so they have reduced their expenditure they are getting their salaries raised because they are still working mm. right and they can have a very nice uh, balance in between their work and life the best part about outdoors is you will not have any idea which day it is monday tuesday <laughs> wednesday thursday so you don't spend 5 days right. planning that hey i have 2 days to enjoy now mm. you know 
so that okay so time i think you'll feel that is an internal entity mm-hmm. and yeah i'm just waking up as per the sun comes out i'll go back to the sleep your biological clock will set mm-hmm. you'll be very close to the outdoors you'll wake up when you hear the hen or the birds chirping because that house is right in the center mm-hmm. of so many trees or pine forests around or farms around you'll start walking a lot there's there's no uh, big uh, fast food giants which are there in hills so you don't have many options basically mm-hmm. and even if you want to eat junk food you have to walk 3 kilometers <laughs> so 30% <laughs> times those plants will get cancer so prepping to eat the junk food by walking 3 kilometers yes but at the same time when you start running walking you know you can also reward yourself once in a week by doing that so i think it definitely brings a lot of mental peace mm. you start moving your body at the first first mm. thing mm. so i think the results of getting this transformation mm. are not very uh, quickly visible but you'll definitely see them happening over a over a duration of few few months right. maybe so i think it is a possibility uh, but you have to find your own big own way because yeah. yeah and i agree i agree that not everybody will have that kind of support mm. not everybody will be comfortable to ask for money from their friends mm. and i still think there is there is still a way whatever to, to works for things. you if not not asking money is something then mm. at least there are a lot of other options to yes. start off and get that initial amount yes. to do that but if you have some other job then try to transition and see if this is actually something you want before you yes. just quit and go and then figure out oh my god what have i done yeah and this will yeah, this field especially outdoor education because that worked for me that is working for me so i can say only on that particular aspect mm. you can earn enough mm. that one fine day you'll be okay that hey i'm earning more than what i'm earning here yeah. and i can now do the do the switch right. but it has to come with a very gradual introduction and people value your originality mm. your original experiences mm. so maybe don't watch any video mm. just go and see mm. things whatever is accessible to you go to, go go there if you live in bangalore go to mangalore if there are hills there go hiking there no need to go to the famous treks in himalaya you'll be like hey nobody searches this keyword mm. hikes around mangalore how many people will search right. how many do you want mm. you don't need millions you need good 100 to mm. start with to right. validate your work right. and if that happens that will keep you in this motivation leap loop that you can just keep building on and on and on so on these lines has there been a community that you have built or community that you seek out to that you know probably the podcast listeners would can probably go and take a look at and see how this has worked yes i think by the time this podcast episode will be aired <laughs> i'll uh, i'll already have a functional diy hiking community which nice. uh, is on the url kreedas.in/community okay. where the intention is i think the major challenge that people face in india when they want to go hiking is mm-hmm. to find the right company by company i mean uh, an individual whom i can go right. hike with and get genuine information from that's not sold to you yes mm. so basically i'm looking for a friend or a mm. core trekker mm. that i can go on hike mm. with right mm. uh, like i live in uh, manali in vashish there is a hot spring mm. in the house no one goes to the hot spring alone <laughs> we seek company even there mm. ki chalo chalo let's go we'll mm. take a bath mm. so we live in a society where we seek this companionship this friendship we don't like doing things alone mm. solo hiking is a very different topic and it has its amazing positive right. benefits i agree mm. but i think i was born and brought up in a way that hey it's it's a thing that we go do together mm. i don't want to hike when i don't have anybody to talk to mm. and i'm also very scared mm. and uh, i know you're also scared mm. but maybe we both of us can make this happen mm. so i think this is the biggest challenge mm. so we need a functional community where people can interact one one another mm. and say that hey i have done this hike and i'm going again maybe i'm just looking for some company mm. let's go right. hike but not in a commercial way in a way that okay we'll have our own learnings mm. and we'll see whether our uh, thoughts are resonating or not mm. and then we can make it make it happen so that's what i'm working on i'm already been working towards that mm. through the social media handles mm. that i work on but i think now i am uh, putting more effort in a directional sense that we can actually build up a functional community mm. and again that model can run without me mm. then only the profit aspect of it can be handled in the long long run mm. i cannot just succumb to the whole idea because then i'll not be able to do the next thing that i want to want to do when you were uh, starting off were there any communities at that time that you reached out to uh technically no there were there were no such communities there, no there were forums mm. there were forums mm. but again the information that was there mm. was about tricks which are at very far away distances i had information that what i can do in himachal what in uttarakhand but i wanted to be at one place and do as much as i can around that particular town so that information was was missing mm. so yeah there was there was no community as as such yeah. but i think my mountaineering course friends 
uh, we used to frequently make plans and and then go out and once you are in the mountains you will keep meeting people on the trails you'll become your friends you'll get company and then you'll make plans together again smaller plans functional realistic plans of day hikes maybe mm. to start with yeah so uh, for the viewers the link right here for the community you can check it out uh, hopefully by the time this is aired it's going to be live <laughs> yeah. so that's on you <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> to get 100%, it live yeah. please check it out so what are some of the um, misconceptions about hmm. speed hiking or independent hiking okay that you have come across yes so i'll uh, cater first misconception or myths which are related mm. to independent hiking mm. the first one is that independent hiking is uh, very risky and it's costly because you know i am handling everything, everything i have to buy a lot of care and i have mm. to carry it all by myself i have to be superhuman to do this yes you know and uh, i have to face all my fears and pain points all at once mm. when i was in a guided trek at least i don't have to think about the trail mm. i don't have to think where i'm sleeping what kind of tent i'm using i'm just walking and that's all that's all i wanted to do right but i think uh, independent hiking is one of the efficient ways to actually go hike mm. to give you an example if you become an independent hiker then if you go to a place like manali i keep repeating the word manali because most of the work that i've done in the last 2 years when it comes to mapping the trails is around that that town most mm. of my learnings come from there mm. so if you go to that place imagine in a guided environment you will go do one trek ham tapas you'll book a flight all the way go there mm. do that trek in 4 to 5 days and go back mm. next time you will not feel the urge to go to manali you feel like oh, i have covered that already i want to go to uttarakhand maybe himachalistan mm. but that's not the case mm. that one trek is not himachal right right mm-hmm. and then every time we are going on a hike you are spending so much more money only on the travel part of it only on the commute part of it mm-hmm. but if you go on an independent mm-hmm. hike for suppose 6 days and you just do 3 mm-hmm. day hikes for example the lama duk trail which is there mm-hmm. vashish to kothi which is another small hike a bias kund which has a very unique different terrain you choose the right easiest season no snow nothing and then you are able to do 3 4 hikes mm. then in there mm. obviously you need some knowledge in order to do it but i think there's enough knowledge out there that will make you capable enough mm. to do it on your own now i can feel that okay i've covered something i've done some 2 3 day treks that are there then again a technical challenge which usually the commercial companies face is if i have to go on a high altitude trek route i start here and i have to reach here somewhere right i cannot go straight up and cross it or come back mm. i have to acclimatize my body n- is very new to high altitude so it i have to do it slowly and gradually i have to climb high but sleep low that's how every person's body course, functions right, right? Mm. that's the safety part of it mm. imagine i run a trek company right i'll take you to some distance a to mm. b mm. which has to be very small mm. because i cannot take you to a higher slope on day one itself mm. so you are technically hiking for 4 hours a day maybe mm. next day again 4 hours mm. and now your body is acclimatizing slowly and then maybe in 4 days you can reach to that point mm. but the total trek distance was actually just 12 12 km mm. right so it's 4 4 4 4 okay 16 km mm. and you are hiking from 9 am mm. to 3 pm that's mm. it that's it that's it the challenge is they cannot help you or make you acclimatize on different slopes mm. and alternate is day 1 instead of hiking here for 4 km i can go on this slope right there an easier day hike go sit in the meadow have your lunch Come back. Come back. You're still acclimatized to the same altitude, right? Mm. Day two, instead of climbing much higher, choose another day hike, which is little higher. Mm. Go there, sit there, spend some time, and then come back. Mm. Here you are doing everything with a big backpack. Mm. There you are doing everything with a day pack. Mm. So very gradual introduction to the outdoors. Mm. And then after doing such day hikes, which help you acclimatize on day three, maybe camp a little higher at some place, so you acclimatize better, mm. and then come back do the same hike in two days. Mm. which you were earlier doing in 4 to 5 days yeah right the best thing about this plan which an independent hiker alone can do is that when in the previous situation i was here to do just this hike which was 5 days long if it didn't work because of bad weather situation or anything i feel that this trip is ruined for me you know i feel that hey i i was not i don't i don't feel good about it mm-hmm. you know and when i go back all my friends are going to ask about it how is it i would say it is nice but you know i couldn't reach to the summit hey i cannot do this i couldn't do that right mm-hmm. as a human you'll not get that closure yeah but imagine in the other situation you have four plans in hand right day one you did it wow oh, successful nice small little happiness that you have day two weather was bad oh you didn't you just chilling in a cafe no problem out of these four plans you'll still make three plans happen for yourself mm-hmm. 
and this is the joy i think that independent tracking gives me this independence mm. that yes i can find you in my experience mm. in the outdoor so that i love it mm. to an extent mm. that i can think of picking it up as a yeah. career the misconception that my trek goal is to reach the peak so that is where i am succeeding yes. versus you succeeding every day yes for the um, the you know the goals that you are self setting and then it becomes a process yes. oriented approach rather than a goal oriented goal bucket oriented list approach, approach. Right. because then you are playing blind but here that's not the case right. and how much money would you would cost you right. to go on a day hike yeah. right it's 300 rupees now when you do the same thing for maybe 30 days mm. that's what is called a speed hike mm. that you go from a to b to c to d to e to f to g h yeah. and now you have hiked so much independently mm. that in 20 days mm. you can actually hike for 300 kilometers mm. not putting your body under any toll or pressure without compromising on your safety in the outdoors and mm. have such grip on that landscape mm. that himachal yeah i did three valleys when i went mm. there last time yeah. and imagine when you'll document such experiences mm. it will just bring so many opportunities mm. right now we look at mountains in a very skewed form mm. that hey there are just these three trails which are out there the moment you start doing more of this you'll feel like oh this endless, endless. this endless opportunities mm-hmm. why does only us have the pacific crest trail mm-hmm. which connects mexico us border to the canada us border 3500 kilometers long mm-hmm. why can't we have something like this in our country we can have it mm-hmm. only when we start picking these things up mm-hmm. because only when i can do a budget trek in budget then only i can do it for 6 months yeah i cannot do it if it's mm. not budget friendly mm. so i think this is where you can reach with uh, introduction to the speed hiking so, and this is just one myth that we have talked about until now right. that it's it's just the budget mm. just the budget part of it and the second is that hey it's not very safe mm. you know uh, what if you get lost mm. what if you this happens what if you slip and fall mm. so okay i have this fear that i'll slip and fall so why can't i address this by learning the right technique on how right. to walk picking the right shoe you know choosing the right season most simplest easiest season mm. again picking the most popular trail mm. nepal is one of the best landscapes mm. everybody goes to ebc everybody goes to annapurna circuit annapurna pass you cannot be alone on a trek for more than a minute if you choose the most popular season mm. so don't worry about the crowd the moment your pace will start picking up you'll still be alone on the trail for mm. quite some time mm. but you are doing it in a very systematic manner right. or in a very gra- very gradual introduction form so then i think it will be possible so it's not unsafe it is just that there are these uncertainties which can be addressed by learning the right technique mm-hmm. you have a fear of losing the trail no problem learn navigation mm-hmm. we live in a age where there are maps which you can read which can just keep you on the trail you can start following those maps and you will always be on the trail mm-hmm. most of the day hikes that you do around any town you know which is at 2000 2500 meters 90% of them will have 4g network mm. so even if you are stuck you can call for help mm. you know you can learn basic self rescue it is not that difficult but uh, i think we need to have this understanding of the knowledge outdoors. is required yeah and, and plus an understanding that okay my goal is not friendship peak mm. you know day 1 mm. my goal is just maybe walk in the forest mm. for 3 hours today and then gradually i'll do friendship peak in my own way in my own style after learning all the skills which are required but right now there is these many things that i can do in this budget mm. without compromising my safety in the outdoors and i'm also learning it and this thing can actually trickle trickle down that is the thing you talk about shepherds shepherds live in the mountains in the meadows which 5000 sheep all the time 6 months they don't have the best care right but they still do that right it is because of that skill that they have right okay the chances of bear attacking you is much less than a bear attacking them mm. because they have easy food there 6000 right. sheep 900 right. sheep right there so by this logic there should have been no shepherd alive today right but they still are <laughs> so <laughs> right yeah so that is that is the thing so i think the way is to figure out the problem that you have accept it that this is my pain point find a solution for that point and you will be able to do it so independent hiking is not costly mm. you will not spend more than 300 rupees mm. even in himalayas mm. even in the western ghats mm. even in the northeast mm. and it is not unsafe mm. until unless the introduction is very gradual right. so what about gears um for all of this there mm-hmm. has to be a set of gears that is your you know go to your checklist that you have Okay. Do you like to share uh, some of the gears that you cannot do without? Okay. So for absolute beginners, I would say start with day hikes. Mm. When I talk about day hikes, mm. pick the right season. Mm. The first thing that you need to walk 
is shoes mm. you need to cover up your feet mm. right so good shoes mm. and obviously a beginner is just learning mm. how to walk on an undulating surface mm. until now we're just walking on the road and i can get on a phone call and i can do that mm. but trekking is all about efficient walking because you're in a in a in a landscape where the terrain is undulating we not look there and just walk you have to look down <laughs> all the time right descend ascend so a good pair of shoe so shoes are designed in terms of two principles basically it's stability mm. and flexibility mm. so when you're a beginner look for stability mm. a shoe which covers your ankle, ankle. and high ankle shoe yeah. because it can avoid your feet from getting ankle yeah. twist yeah. but at the same time in the long run right you have to switch to a trail running shoe mm. because the shoe that protects your ankle mm. is also restricting your ankle mobility mm. So in the long run my ankle will stay weak if I stick to that shoe forever. Oh, I so, do not know that. I think no gear is bad, okay. right? Every gear is being designed made keeping in thought mm. who is this made for. Mm. So if you fall in that category, mm. use that. You know, when I am a beginner, I don't want my feet to be wet. You know, I really don't want and I feel that I feel wet or cold very much. I'm more susceptible to cold. I just don't want my feet to be wet. Mm. Invest into waterproof shoes, not a problem. Mm. But now as your experience is increasing maybe, right? Mm. The problem is not the water that is outside because now you know that okay if i hike for 10 kilometers it is just two stream crossings and the moment the stream crosses stream crosses my ankle then it really doesn't matter what shoe i'm wearing because the water will go inside yes. from the top right anyway <laughs> right so now when i'm increasing uh, the unless distance unless you have decathlon's quick dry shoes it's still possible to quick dry yes, it yes <laughs> yes definitely quick dry is a basic so, feature that will you you will have in all your clothing yeah. we in hiking we say cotton kits right so while hiking you need quick dry for mm -hmm. sure mm -hmm. but coming back to the shoe part Now I'm walking a lot. My experience has increased. I'm covering more distances. So it's not the water that is outside my shoe. It's the sweat which is inside my shoe, which is bothering me more, and I'll get blisters now. So I want a shoe now which also works on moisture management well. Mm. You know. So that's my time when I can switch mm. to trail running shoes, mm. but not as a beginner. You cannot be like, oh, I'll save money. I'll just buy a trail running shoe and I'll go hiking. Mm. High chances you'll injure yourself. Mm. Get a good shoe that gives you ankle protection as a beginner. keep hiking mm. also work on an ankle mobility and then do the transition so this is a scale mm. and therefore i think there is no one size fits all approach when it comes to gear you cannot be like hey this is the best shoe in the world and right. you can do everything with it right. that's not the case you know which category do you fall in and then pick the right True. thing when it comes to clothing i think we have our base layers mm. that stay close to our body mm. then we have our shell layers mm. right and then we have our feather jackets mm. for most of the hikes that you do across the country or across the world the base layer the fleece and the shells they don't really change a lot hmm. it's just the feather jacket that actually changes hmm. because it is just a variation of temperature that you're going in hmm. right so you just have to have a constant hmm. on your base layer your fleece and your shell or the rain rain coat or the wind sheeter mm. and then you can keep wearing your feather jackets mm. so this way i know that okay on what equipment i can actually invest mm. so on day hikes you just need the shoes you need a basic backpack and check the weather maybe just carry a small fleece or rain coat mm. and then a little power bank to keep your devices charged and then you can go hiking when you switch to multi day hikes then i think there's a there's a lot of list that comes up but obviously a head torch good pair of shoe mm. good clothing choices based on the landscape a few basic things that that you would have to carry so i think i've been um, using decathlon products since a couple of years now i really love the 30 liter backpack mm. and uh, whatever i've done 20 kilometers to 300 kilometers especially in the high altitudes has been done in the 30 liter backpack so i really really love it when i still want to switch to go more into ultra light hiking that's when i'll do a switch but as of now that definitely suffices mm. uh, further i think i also love the 15 liter trail running backpack i have done so many trail runs in that further i have started doing a lot of speed hiking in that so whenever i come to maharashtra i know that i don't have to carry a tent because there'll be villages quite often every 20 mm -hmm. 30 kilometers mm -hmm. and i can do that much of distance in a day in speed hike trail running bag comes very handy it's so light and you go really really fast and it's not that you're not carrying the required things you're carrying everything it's that enough. is required yeah that's enough mm -hmm. you're not compromising on the safety and i also love the mattress it's super thin and uh, it fits in everywhere and i've used it in almost all the situations north india northeast india the western ghats everywhere and i think i'm already in a situation where i don't actually uh, utilize the trekking boots since quite some time now because they're heavy and i have to walk very fast and the shoe needs to dry very quickly so i definitely love the trail running shoes because mm. those are my go to shoes mm. and i have one pair that goes on to my travel hiking running meeting friends everything that i do is in that 
mm-hmm. one pair until it's mm-hmm. it's given up mm-hmm. and then i switch to the <laughs> i switch to the next one yeah so these what are about things yeah headlights every I, single person has mentioned headlights so far okay the but i i rarely hike in night and uh-huh. i always make it up to the campsite mm-hmm. when uh, it's already there's enough light right. and even a uh, head torch is little weight to be honest mm-hmm. so i usually use the torch that i have in built in my phone mm-hmm. so that's the thing i rarely cook food mm-hmm. i eat fresh food i get mm-hmm. the food from the villages and mm-hmm. before uh, it crosses its shelf life i consume it consume. and i reach to the next village mm-hmm. before i reach to the time when i have to get the next meal mm-hmm. so head torches uh, i it depends on what trek do i actually need it but for me phone does enough, enough. but i think uh, as i'm going into longer distances that is definitely becoming a part of uh, my permanent gear list so yes head torches i i would still say a short answer would be yes, yes. yeah so you spoke about uh, speed hiking and how uh, your backpack is something that suffices you to uh, do the longer uh, duration of box yeah. we did not get into the details of what speed hiking is so we spoke about independent hiking then there's diy hiking and then now there's speed hiking so a little bit more about uh, speed hiking and if someone's interested what's the endurance because it's longer okay. so what what is it that uh, people have to do to get into speed hiking speed hiking okay So uh independent hiking and DIY trekking are synonyms mm. exact synonyms mm. you're doing things on your own mm. you're carrying everything on your shoulder mm. and getting out into the wilderness mm. there's also a little nuance when it comes to hiking or trekking mm. you know mm. hike i think is a very gradual introduction mm. i'll just go out spend some time in the outdoors and then i'll come back that's a easy hike for me trek basically would mean that hey i am already independent and i want to spend some couple of days in the wilderness mm. so i'm carrying my shelter my food mm. my my whatever whatever i need and i'm completely independent right if, even if there's no signal or anything i know where am i going navigation all the apps that i've required or paper maps or digital maps whatever it is i'm going there will spend some nights in the outdoors and i'll come back so that's trekking but these terms are also relative what can be a 3 day trek for me can be a single day hike for a speed hiker now what speed hiker does is he has been hiking for quite some time first of all he has to be an experienced independent hiker to be honest mm. now when i go on these multiple hikes year after year month after month week after week you will understand the nuances of the gear that you are using hey i carried all these things but i never actually used this so maybe i can replace it with a lighter gear mm. the functionality stays but the weight comes down you know maybe i don't need the frame in my backpack mm. because now even that frame adds 600 grams so maybe i can switch to a frameless bag mm. but you're not compromising on your safety right mm. since the weight of your overall equipment reduces maybe you don't need a frame in your backpack and that way also you can reduce that weight so an ultra light hiking uh which is basically speed hiking you have optimized all your gear the weight of everything that you carry on your shoulders mm. drastically mm. but again i would repeat without compromising on your safety there's everything that is required in your backpack mm. you have your raincoat you have your torch you have your backup power banks you have your tent but imagine a tent which has its own pole structure instead of that i can pitch that tent using a trekking pole Mm. you know what is that trekking pole doing when i'm sleeping right it's just lying down right. why don't i can why can't i use the trekking pole to you know keep my tent in shape so there are tents that are available mm. which can be pitched using the trekking pole alone wow so this is how you're optimizing your gear and you're not compromising on your safety right mm-hmm. but obviously these tents that can be pitched using a trekking pole are mm-hmm. costly mm-hmm. ultra light hiking gear also means that you need to take utmost care of it mm. you cannot throw your backpack you cannot throw your tent right. you cannot be careless with the zip you right. have to be very careful mm. when you're using that gear so gear protects you when you use it nicely mm. and as a beginner maybe i'm not in that situation mm. to do that but as an experienced individual you'll be able to do that so when i go on speed hikes the weight of my backpack never crosses 7 kg mm. and 7 kg then feels like nothing so you need lesser breaks because you're not tired mm. So one one big misconception or the point that I get is hey why do you go so fast mm. why don't you sit and enjoy mm. you're not enjoying you're rushing through the landscape but that's not the case not true. Mm. you need a break only when you feel like having a break mm. but w- what if i tell you that i'm not tired mm. to take a break mm. and if i can do it while vlogging by clicking pictures by talking to you on a upslope obviously my fitness has increased mm. my experience has increased mm. but in speed hiking speed is not prime facie the main feature it's not the cause mm. 
when you imagine speed hiking closing your eyes you would imagine fit boys and girls shorts and t-shirts hiking up <laughs> striking their poles and whoop running up hill right those guys are trail runners mm. speed hiker is an individual who has optimized the weight of the backpack mm. who is good at navigation mm. so the chances of him lo- him or her losing the trail mm. are lesser and even if they lose the trail mm. they avoid that temptation to keep falling that trail they'll mm. come back fall on the trail mm. okay, hey where did i miss the trail mm. and they'll be back on the trail mm. so you spend less time mm. figuring out where the trail is so mm. you quickly cross the landscape mm. choose the right season mm. you have the ni- you have the right gear to do so you know you have optimized everything so therefore when you work on all these skills of your physical capabilities mm. what kind of nutrition you should carry that will actually give you enough, en- enough energy for example you can eat dates and peanuts mm. while you're walking on a flat ground it takes time for the the peanuts and the dates to uh, digest mm. it keeps your sugar level nice and it gives you constant energy right. throughout the trail so you don't have to sit and eat right if i'm not carrying uh, things to cook my meals i don't need a utensil to cook i don't need raw food and i don't need another uh, stove or fuel to cook that food i can just carry parathas yeah. right and i'm not compromising on my taste also right. i can club it with some other things so optimizing the weight of your backpack will actually automatically increase your speed mm. or to basically conclude the moment you try and love independent hiking the moment you try going towards being an efficient hiker mm. you'll end up speed hiking there is no other way okay. you are waking up as per the sun sun teaches you okay the sun is up what am i doing in my tent mm. i'm here to walk i'll go walk mm. and that walk is not tiresome for you it's enjoyable for you hey man let's wake up it's 5 am come on let's get done with our mm. business let's start hiking mm. and you'll hike until 5 mm. if you walk for 12 hours a day mm. with a lighter backpack you will see that you're not struggling against your backpack 90% people struggle against their backpack and not the mountain slope true that's very true really yeah right mm. and therefore i feel mm. speed hiking is just an efficient way mm. one of the efficient ways to hike independently mm. and then you can squeeze in so much of experience mm. in that limited stipulated amount of time that you mm. have and it's very easy you save time you save money earlier i used to take a bus go to a valley hike come back take a bus and come back right now i don't take a bus mm. i start hiking from here mm. cross a pass mm. go to the other valley mm. 300 rupees mm. take another pass do another mountain pass go to the next valley mm. 300 rupees mm. now i'll come back through a different way mm. i'll do two more passes on my way back and i'm back home i didn't spend a single rupee mm. on my travel mm. and i'm spending most of my time walking mm. so then you do a lot of trekking in good amount of time so you are utilizing your time and money very mm. efficiently so i think independent hiking if it translates to you for efficient hiking you will end up speed hiking but please understand speed hiking speed is not the cause right it's the effect mm. of everything, everything that you're doing yeah so you are a plethora of information i feel like i should just <laughs> sit and speak and speak and speak but um and thank you for everything you have shared so far yeah. uh, we have a small more segment where i would still need to pick your brain so i'm yeah. going to get my cue cards So I have my cards. Yeah. Um, so this is a speed segment. Okay. I'm going to ask you question and as fast as possible, just whatever comes to your mind. Okay. Answer. Okay. Yeah, Let's start. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, what do your parents think of your career choice? <laughs> they think I'm on the completely wrong track. <laughs> But I do understand where they are coming from. Yeah. Okay. If you had a penny for every time somebody misunderstood what you do for a living, how much money would you have in the bank? I would be quite rich. Quite rich. Yeah. But I think uh, now I'm able to translate. to what's oh, the man. other side yeah slowly and gradually yeah okay. misconceptions about speed hiking uh that it's costly that it's for the fittest individuals it's not for beginners mm-hmm. and uh, it is not everybody cup everyone's cup of tea that's not the case okay. fourth one hiking or trekking which is your choice on a sunny day okay it all depends if i just want to spend some time in the outdoors with friends and i don't have much time mm-hmm. hiking i'll just go hike take a small backpack and do it but if i'm into something that hey i need 3 days into the wilderness then hiking so longer plans trekking smaller plans hiking okay. sunny day for obvious i choose sunny days every time uh, a decathlon gear you'd recommend for everyone 30 liter backpack to start with i would always suggest every independent hiker not to cross it try to try to pack in that because if you have less space you'll put more mind into what i don't really need you'll not you'll not pack for what if situations basically you'll become efficient so if you had a superpower no if you wish for a superpower for your time in the mountains what would it be uh 
i think it would be to have more sunny days have like pub, like bigger weather windows where i can hike as much as much as i can i i really don't like when it rains up in the himalayas <laughs> um an embarrassing gear mistake you made in your early days 55 liter backpack <laughs> okay <laughs> that is quite big share one fascinating fact about hiking that most people might not know Okay so what i really like is when i meet people in the outdoors and when i'm hiking with them nature draws a straight line and uh, there is no discrimination it really doesn't matter whether you're a company of a ceo of a company you're a student you're a boy you're a girl uh, nature draws a line mm-hmm. and everybody is equal mm-hmm. i love that part about it i we don't talk about what you do it's all about hey we are here to hike that's all yeah if you and your hiking gear had a spirit animal for the trail what would it be <laughs> I think it will be a monkey <laughs> because <laughs> because I come from Rajasthan when I was a child there were so many monkeys that come used to come to our house mm-hmm. and I also love free running and parkour mm-hmm. I know monkeys won't survive in high altitude mm-hmm. but I still love monkeys with the amount of agility and stability that they have nice yeah I thought you were going to say sheep for some reason because they can go like anywhere no but sheep <laughs> sheep goes there for grass monkeys like to do things which they may not enjoy all sweat times yeah and they're also a little experimental mischievous they take that leap of faith i don't know whether i'll grab that branch if i jump or not right. so that jump is something that i really really love beautifully said about monkeys <laughs> <laughs> i can say so, if you had to leave for a hike right away okay which one would you pick and why i think this uh, lake that i went to as a solo trekker in ladakh in august i went to this lake called tso marpo mm-hmm. in ladakh tso t s o means lake, lake and marpo means red mm-hmm. that is one single lake at 5000 meters which is absolutely red in color the water is wow. red in color i used to talk about that lake in my speed hiking courses mm-hmm. uh, to all the participants that i'll go do it i'll go do it this year i went and i did that and i really wish to go back there once again it nice. does not mean that that is on my priority list i think for me uh, ped pahad patthar pani they're all the same i enjoy mm-hmm. every element i don't prioritize that hey this is what i want to do mm-hmm. but rapid fire so so much okay yeah One question you are tired of being asked. Uh how do you make a living out of it? That is the one. I'm not tired I'm not tired I think but I think uh, this podcast will help and I should make more podcast on this specific topic in great detail because I think this is the most pinching question yeah. that everybody has yeah. especially youngsters there are so many young individuals so like bhaiya how much do you make mm-hmm. how do you make mm-hmm. it happen mm-hmm. so yeah yeah okay uh five hikes or treks everyone should include in their bucket bucket list for 2024 okay so i don't really relate to the concept of bucket, bucket list, list to be honest okay. but i think uh, manali again uh, is a place where there, where there are so many trails which are mapped mm-hmm. and you can actually do so many things in budget and mm-hmm. a very small amount of time mm-hmm. so go to brigu lake mm-hmm. there are some day hikes mm-hmm. vashish to koti travers mm-hmm. go to rani suvi lake it's an amazing lake to be go to bias kund mm-hmm. that is amazing mm-hmm. and also go to kanyal circuit if you are a parent to a kid if you are an elderly individual if you think that uh, you know you are a little obese and maybe outdoors is not for you kanyal is for you it's a flat nice walk in one of the most beautiful forests that you'll come across manali and you'll have a very different understanding of that town if you do these hikes there yeah okay. so do the famous ones mm. but also do the less popular ones okay. yeah last question yeah. I, i think people would want to know this <laughs> five ways of making money doing what you do Okay so I think maybe don't I don't have five ways but I think uh, documentation would be would be my answer if you can document your experiences mm-hmm. it will actually help trickle down your knowledge to the people who are not yet there and you don't have to be an expert mm-hmm. whatever you're doing in the initial days of your life in this field start documenting things it will really really help mm-hmm. solve people's problem and in a longer run you will come up with a product or a solution that will actually you know make you money mm-hmm. and second thing is you can obviously freelance a lot mm-hmm. you can uh, if you have any other skill right if you can edit videos if you can be a voice for someone for videos you can you can do that that's another way to make money mm-hmm. third thing is obviously a freelance guide i think there's too much to learn there i also ran a trekking company for 2 years in hyderabad mm-hmm. so i first took time to realize why i don't like this thing and i just want to do everything on my own so freelancing is another beautiful thing third thing is i think again you can team up with someone who is already doing such things like i'm constantly on a look towards someone who can do copywriting so that we can create some beautiful content by doing so you're also improvising or improving your knowledge of the outdoors mm. by not being in the outdoors but still utilizing your skill to maybe make that switch slowly and gradually and last but not least i think 
there is also a particular scope for doing gear reviews. There is no one who is doing gear reviews in our country. Mm -hmm. And if you can just pick products from Decathlon, they have an infinite range of products. Pick those products, go out, use them, build your understanding around them, and I can guarantee a YouTube channel will have the maximum number of subscriptions mm -hmm. if that channel just does mm -hmm. gear reviews. Mm -hmm. That's all. I think awesome. they're five now. <laughs> so I've come to the end of the speed segment. I still uh, have one last question to ask uh, yeah. based on the recent events and things that have been happening. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of things that change, um, has been changed over the years and every year we see something new. I'm talking about the, our nature, our environment, yeah. global warming, global boiling. It's what it's termed as now. Mm -hmm. And we all saw what has happened in our ranges and our mountains. Uh, and given that your main or the, the concept of this main profession is the mountains and it's being there, um, has this affected you and what do you do? Do you just sit for three months until things open up? How, how do you cope with this? Okay, so I think I have two approaches with this, which I'm actually working on. Mm -hmm. So it, the short answer is yes, it definitely affects what you're doing. So for example, recently when it, it uh, the Manali, the whole valley was flooded, I was right there in mm -hmm. the valley and it was very, very, very sad to see all that happen. The two ways to do that is, for example, I've, I run my speed hiking courses on those states also. So that cannot happen. So you definitely lose a lot of money. But two ways to cope is, number one, switch your sport. So I come up with the name Kridas of the channel. It comes from the word Krida, which basically means sport. So I want to go up in a sport, for example, hiking to a level that I can create a system here, a model that can work independent of me and then switch to the next sport, take my learnings from here, go there. Mm -hmm. And therefore you see me doing a lot of trail runs now. And then when Manali was flooded, me and another friend of mine, Arthik, we thought that, hey, right now the highways are actually empty towards Leh. So why can't we go cycling? We'll have no pollution on our face and we can actually ride comfortably. And I'm very new to cycling. Mm -hmm. So that was my gradual introduction because mm -hmm. he was a cyclist. So I can just cope up with him based on my fitness and experience in the high altitude. Mm -hmm. High altitude was new for him. Cycling was new for me. Mm -hmm. Good combination. We cycled from Manali all the way to Kargil and Leh. So I got a very nice understanding of how ultra light hiking gear also plays a great role for you to become a cyclist in the high altitude. So number one, keep switching your field so that whatever conglomeration of experiences that you will have, you can definitely in future create a product or a service out of it that will earn you enough money. Number two is also widen your sample space. So if I am limited to one valley, for example, Manali in Himachal or Kullu Valley, and if that gets flooded and all of that I do is limited to that space, my business will be affected to a great extent. So in the long run, I would suggest to shift most of the things online, make products that people can pick from across the world. Maybe make a DIY hiking handbook, mm -hmm. which we are actually working on right now. So it reaches to you. You don't have to come do a course with me. I'll come where you are living. Mm -hmm. So now I do courses all across India. I'm doing courses in Maharashtra, right? And I'm here right now. I did a course when I cannot do it in North up there. Mm -hmm. And you can further you know, increase this horizon or sample space when we are in a country which is above the equator, India. So when we have winters, everything below equator has summers. Go to South America, invest your earnings into your new learnings mm. and then go hike there. Maybe you can do one speed hiking course in Vietnam next year. Mm. Right. So that way you can actually keep increasing your playground. There's no right. limitation on it. So diversification of your profile and increasing the, the area of command that you have. These two ways I think I am working on mm -hmm. to you know avoid such situations. And I feel that it is also very crucial. Mm -hmm. Initially, I used to think that, hey, I, 2019, right? I want to go to Nepal and hike there. Man, it's so amazing. It's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. Due to financial limitations, I was not able to do that. Mm -hmm. So we need to look at money at a very from a very enabling point of view, right? I had a dream that I want to go to Nepal and hike the Annapurna circuit for two long years. I went there finally when I had the required amount of money. When I went there, I did that. I was like, hey, I can do the exact same thing. Mm. I would have done it a year ago. Mm. It was just the money that was right. stopping me, right? So you understand that this dream of yours that you're not able to fulfill is becoming a hurdle. Mm. Because until you, until unless you achieve it, mm. how will you see the next dream? Mm. So it, it is blocking me. Mm. So therefore look at money as an enabling factor it is your moral responsibility to fulfill your dream dream as quickly and as ethical as possible mm. so that mm, you can see the next big dream don't live with that dream go execute do something achieve it mm. the moment you'll do it you'll be like hey now i am on this level and i'm confident enough let's 
let's let's go something else let's go do something else you have a bigger dream now and if you keep doing things in this manner i think these things will definitely affect you in the short term mm -hmm. but you're anyhow in this for a long long, long, long term yeah so one common question that you said uh, you know you you've been asked a lot is how do you convince your parents <laughs> yeah how did you convince your parents have you convinced your parents <laughs> yeah uh, first of all i think uh, that until now no the answer is simple short answer is no so no i they're, they're still not on board right we still have that friction but uh, i think initially what i had to do was to leave my house to to go away from that environment you always seek an environment where even if people are not there to motivate you there's no one who's demotivating you right whatever statements that they were saying or whatever was there it was all out of concern that they they, they don't want to lose their son mm -hmm. you know he it is he's going completely off right. off trail it's mm -hmm. not even 179 degrees it's 180 degrees from engineering to civil services to having a business of his own that is something that i can take from my father going all the way hiking in the jungle where they see me eating cold food you know uh, being all dirty and filthy at times maybe not that clean i's like oh, we came from the village we brought you guys to the city mm -hmm. so that you For don't this, have to walk yeah. and now you choose you just choose to walk, walk. Yeah. right so i understand from mm -hmm. where they are coming but it took me some time mm -hmm. initially i would say that i was a rebel mm -hmm. i had to because uh, if you're not understanding me i have to go away yeah. so first thing i decided was that okay the people who love the most you will hurt them the most if you want to execute your free will mm -hmm. so i obviously talk about all these things that if i would have been an obedient son maybe i would have not been sitting here mm -hmm. to be honest mm -hmm. so first this is step number 1 that so if your parents support what you do it is amazing that's the best thing whenever i talk to foreigners when i'm hiking in nepal i tell them that see in my country at least from where i come my struggle was not whether you know a bear will attack me or whether i'll get lost or not or i'll get hurt or not 80% of the mental energy or the mind space goes into hey what will i tell my father what will i tell my mom right but at the same time now with time i think i make my vlogs in english but they do watch it <laughs> right they do that who share it yeah. often mm -hmm. so that's there and i think uh, this validation that i get first of all from the community if anybody says me hey what you're doing is amazing and i'm like glad that you find it amazing because i also have my days when i'm down mm -hmm. and a message like this actually actually helps me fuel this thing that i am yeah. doing mm -hmm. i live in places which are hostels mm -hmm. i don't think i would love to stay in a room because then these thoughts will come mm -hmm. what if you don't make it mm -hmm. what if you don't succeed why do you want to hurt your parents so mm -hmm. much to such a great extent that yeah. you know when you're coming back from jaipur to manali your mom just cries all her heart out and mm -hmm. you're just standing there like a stone mm -hmm. that I have to go. I I love that, but I love them too. Yeah. So I think I have a baseline that I don't want to leave them ever, and I have to make this work for me very very quickly because every night I I feel that they are in this impression that hey when is this guy going to get married? <laughs> when <laughs> when is this future generation is going to come in? Yeah. What is it that he's What's he doing? doing? So I think the major goal would be to simplify things to an extent where my father can or mother can just say. Uh, you know that this is what my son does and they would be happy happy about it so yeah but i think uh, it is okay to first acknowledge mm -hmm. you will shut your doors to them initially but uh, if you have a plan and if you give all in i think it will it will work by hook or crook i think they don't want anything bad for you so don't lose contact mm -hmm. be in touch mm -hmm. <laughs> find your way here and there right yeah. uh, try to avoid the shadi situation <laughs> and unless you feel that you are ready for it because i feel right now i am focusing on you know building up a business model mm -hmm. i don't think i'm in a position to create more liabilities or invest into assets or things like these right so it has not been easy mm -hmm. for for sure mm -hmm. when we meet in the festivals they have stopped going to marriages because of me because the first question they are asked is oh, what does your son does oh. and he feels utterly you know he doesn't feel good it. about it and mm -hmm. it's difficult to explain mm -hmm. right so i think the major agenda would be to and i think both these ideologies can coexist mm -hmm. what they are saying is absolutely correct mm -hmm. with what they have seen in 50 they years see. so when you ask about convincing your parents i don't think that there's any convincing required right i don't even think that they have to come two steps and i have to go two steps i just believe that i have to make it happen that both of these things mm. can coexist mm. so you think okay 
you should have a job which has social prestige and do a business mm. save mm. and do this yes you can live your life this way mm. and at the same time i can also live my life happily mm. involving these risks because i'm someone who loves uncertainty mm. i i really don't like if everything is certain i know what's going to happen after 3 hours what am i doing that in that process i i think it is all about constantly evolving solving those problems which are out which are out there yeah but i think it has been my friends who have supported me a lot a lot but i don't want everybody here to see my parents in the bad light it is uh, just that they they just want good for you uh, <laughs> but i think i'll make it happen the fact that <laughs> you um, you know built this community and this brand <coughs> that is you Mm-hmm. um that you're able to share this with the rest of us and there are going to be so many yeah. uh, listeners today who are going to who are going to listen to this and i want to take so much from you and trust me when i say this i've learned <laughs> so much in just 90 minutes of talking to you i would love to go on a hike and and yeah, you know, yeah. Yeah. just a lot of like that's like all a pick your brain or something <laughs> that's all so i do I'm, i'm always I'm, up for a walk you've yeah. already made it there's more to this and there's yeah. so much more that you'll go so i'm um, i'm Well wishes from our side, from thank everybody you. here in the studio today, and from everybody, <laughs> yeah. all the yeah. listeners. Um, thank you, thank, thank you, you thank for you. coming in today from Manali, <laughs> and uh, you know, sharing your experience, sharing yeah. what others can do, and mm-hmm. uh, everything that you have to give. Yes, thank I think so outdoors much. is an amazing place to be. That is for for sure. I think it is for everyone. Uh, we get enough, uh, you know, rough experiences in the city, so don't go out there to to feel rough. you f- should feel joy sure. outdoors has to be as comfortable as indoors mm. and outdoors is for everyone that's that's the moral of the story for me yeah yeah well, i we yeah. could totally see it uh, what you feel about the yeah. mount outdoors and <laughs> connect to the mountains and yeah. i really do hope that the viewers also see it that way and uh, get a lot of information to do this on their own and you'll probably meet a couple of our listeners on your hiking trail somewhere yeah yeah for sure for sure, for sure. Yeah. so thank you for the opportunity it has been an absolute pleasure and i think there's a time limit but i can just go on <laughs> yeah, and course. on and on yeah yeah because i love this thing i guess we'll, we'll yeah. go on offline yeah sure yeah. sure sure sure, sure. So yeah. thanks thank for you coming so much. thank you yeah. so much for sharing everything you had to share yes and Thank you for coming and sharing everything you had to share today, and I really hope um, yeah. you know, the listeners have listened, <laughs> you know, very, very attentively to you. Um, for the rest of you, this is your host Maula Nanaya signing off. Um, do hit the subscribe button, and our next episode is going to be very furry, and you're going to not be able to keep calm. So please um, leave your comments below on what you think the next episode is, and stay tuned. See you. You are a plethora of information. <laughs> so much, I feel like. No, I was saying that for the podcast. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs>